we press Control D on our keyboard, this will bring up our project settings. And if we go to Dynamics and Expert, you will see here, steps per frame is 5. So it's saying, I want you to calculate this dynamic 5 times per frame. And because the frames are obviously um, so fast, it doesn't have enough time to calculate it. So if we increase this to 20, it's saying calculate each frame 20 times. And this is why it's a lot slower in the viewport. As you can see, it's, it's very slow and jagged. And that's simply because of the number of steps it's calculating for us. But now, as you can see, everything is actually staying connected. The hook is staying connected. It, the, um, hook, the chain link is staying connected to the torus. And that's exactly what we want. The other problem we're having now is it's not the, the ball is not connecting to anything. It's just falling down. And that's not what we want. And the reason it pops up when we press play is because the ball is intersecting the chain link. And it forces it out. That's why it pops it up. So the way to combat this is to basically add in a connector. So if we go to simulation and we go to dynamics and we hit a connector. Now this is what I'm talking about why you need uh, release 12 or above because they added connections um, and springs and forces and motors in release 12. So I'm going to bring this down here just so the hierarchy is correct and the, what the connector does is basically connects two objects together and it's really good for dynamics. Um, so what I want to do is change it from a hinge to a fixed object because we don't want it to move, we just want it to connect together solidly like it would actually be one object but of course the two individual elements. So what we do is we drag our um, sphere connector and our sphere into the connector so we want to drag our sphere connector into A because we want to connect A to B which is the sphere. Now we want to leave everything as default, uh, ignore collisions uh, because obviously they're intersecting, we want to ignore that and we want the mass to be centre. So if we, if we press play now you will see that they actually do stay connected which is cool but the chain does snap. Now the reason the chain is snapping is because of the mass and density of the actual objects. So if we press Control D again and go to our, um, our project settings and go back to general, you will see that the gravity is set to a thousand and the density is set to one. So every object that has dynamics has a density of one, which is saying they're equal in mass and density. But because the chain is made up of individual elements, this has less mass in a sense than this big ball because the ball is just one solid object and the mass is made up of small, um, sorry, the chain link is made up of small um, elements. So it wouldn't be able to support the weight of the ball because it's just too big. Now, I think if we actually scaled our sphere down, let's just test this on the fly. Um, let's reduce the scale. I don't know where my, my thing is in the middle, but let's just scale it down to something stupidly like that and move it up. So if we did that and press play, would it actually still, yeah, it would still actually um, break. So it doesn't really matter on the size of your object. It's just because it's one actual object that is, is affecting it like this. So what we need to do to combat this is actually change the density of the objects. So I want to click the torus. I want to click the chain link, the connector, and leave the sphere as it is. So I want to go to mass, I want to change this from world density, which is default at set 1, to custom. And we want to increase this really, really high. Now, if you put it to 2, it would still snap, simply because the density is just too close. So if we set this to 5000, and we hit play, you'll see that it does actually stay connected now. But if we actually put this to, let's say, 100 and press play, it will still snap. So the density has to be a very high number. Now, I don't understand why it has to be so high, um, but I just know that it does. So I'm gonna keep it up at 5,000. Um, 
I mean, it doesn't affect anything apart from how the dynamics interact. Like, obviously, the chain splitting, it stops that. Um, it doesn't increase the amount of time calculated in dynamics. It's just telling it this object is really strong because it's got a really heavy mass. So, there we go. Now, that's done. Really cool. So, now that we've done that, you might be wondering, well, how do I actually get it into a natural position? Well, if you press play, you see that it all interacts cool and everything's, you know, taking shape and whatnot. If we press pause and we actually select all our dynamics and we basically, you don't have to select the collider because they don't move, but I'm just going to select them all for this purpose. And if you hit initial state and basically go back to the beginning, you will see that it will automatically start in that position now, which is really cool. But if we want to add another position, let's say we want to have it so it's swinging like in the example video at the beginning. We will basically go to um, animation, not animation, sorry, um, simulation, um, particles and add in a wind modifier. Um, and basically what this is going to do is it's going to add wind to our scene. And because it's, um, basically it, it will automatically be added to these. So if we go to forces, um, I think it's include. No, it's not. But I know it does still affect these regardless of being in their forces or not. I'm not 100% sure why that is. But if we press play, you'll see that it is actually blowing the ball. So if we go back to the beginning and increase the wind to something stupid like, um, let's say, 50, and hit play now, the wind is going to blow that really high. And if we press pause now, and we actually we can actually delete the wind now we don't need it so delete the wind and basically go back to these and go to dynamic set initial state and if we press play now you'll see that our chain will actually um, actually just actually d interact with the wind how it was now your chain could still snap at this point simply because of the amount of force that the ball is basically interacting with as you can see it's kind of pulling it down quite far so the chain could snap if that does happen just increase your steps now it's very important that you um, play with your steps um, properly by that I mean if we basically make this longer and press ctrl D and go to expert go to the beginning uh, go to the beginning and basically let's put this down to 10 and press play you see it it actually is staying connected, which is quite good. So that's good. So if we actually decrease this to 5, would it still be the same? No. See, the chain just it can't support it. It doesn't have enough frames to calculate. So let's say, what about 8? Would you still survive with 8? Nope. 8 is still too low. So let's go to 10. And let's press play. So the viewport playback is extremely fast. Um, you know, there's no jittering or whatever, and it's still staying connected, which is really cool. So we know that we don't have to go any higher than 10 steps per frame. And this is basically gonna do um reviewing your you know finished object a lot better than having something say 50, because having 50 is it's just it's unnecessary. And the playback is really, really slow. And you just can't get a feel for how it's actually interacting. So please make sure when you are setting up your frames, if it is snapping and stuff out, working out the way you want it, just try increase your frames and try find that sweet number that actually works. Because the less you have, um, the better. But, you know, you still need it to look pretty good. So, now that's uh, pretty good. Let's just do one last thing before we finish up this tutorial. Um, I know it's been quite long. Uh, but hopefully you guys, you know, got some out of this. So let's basically add in a biped. And let's reduce the size. Something, let's say 300. And put it down on the ground. Like so. And let's add a simulation. Let's add a rigid body. Let's trigger on collision. Because we only want this guy to interact when 
he actually collides with something or something collides with him. So we can see he's not directly on the ground, so let's move him down a tad. And it looks like he will actually get knocked the hell out by this wrecking ball. So let's rotate him actually. Just for the you know the the sake of this tutorial. Um and then let's go into our perspective and let's hope this actually hits him. So I press play and run round. Boom! He is going off. <laughs> so again, you you can do anything with this. You can knock anything. You could make um, a wall, and you could basically have the um, the wrecking ball, you know, break it into a thousand pieces. I mean, there's a lot of things you can actually do that would make this really cool to actually play with. And let's just duplicate a few more, and let's just see what happens here. Boom. So it kind of looks like a bit like the Matrix. <laughs> I wonder if we add this to individual elements, would it actually break apart? Let's have a look. Pow! Now that is how you blow someone up. <laughs> So guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, please leave a comment in the section below what you thought of this tutorial. Um, did it help you? Are you going to try it out? If you are going to try it out, you know, leave a video response so we can see your results. Um, and if you want more basic tutorials or more tutorials like this, then please, of course, leave a comment. Uh, thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more tutorials and more speed art and all that kind of good stuff. Um, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.